Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn how to configure self-hosted runners in GitHub Actions. What are all GitHub runners? So GitHub runners are nothing but build agents where you can run your CACD workflow. If you're using GitHub Actions, uh, GitHub Actions provide two different type of runners. Primarily, you can go with the GitHub hosted runner or you can go for self-hosted runner. They also have large, larger runner as well, where you know the sizing is really huge if you wanted to. Or they also have you know ephemeral self-hosted runner, primarily like they're all on demand. Okay, but the scope of this particular video, we are going to talk about how we can configure a self-hosted runner. Try to compare self-hosted runner with the GitHub hosted runner. Um, like GitHub hosted runners are nothing but they're all completely provided by GitHub itself. The build agents provided by GitHub itself. So GitHub manages the entire infrastructure. They also have various type of uh, you know uh, runners. It could be Ubuntu, Windows, CentOS, you name it, right? They have all kind of you know GitHub hosted runner. You can run your workflow pretty much on any any type of operating system, right? All you have to do is just mention the label and then boom, you know you are done. Okay, but let's say that you want to have more control over the build agents then you can go for something called self-hosted runner. So that's exactly what we are going to talk about in this video. So this is my website folks, coachdevops.com. I would be posting the link right below the video as well. All right, so, so let's look at this diagram, right? So you can configure self-hosted runner pretty much anywhere. You can set up self-hosted runner on-premises or you can set up in AWS cloud or Azure cloud or pretty much any popular cloud providers out there. Or you can also run self-hosted runners as Docker ephemeral containers as well. Okay, but the scope of this video is we are going to pick up a EC2 instance in AWS cloud and then we are going to configure, uh, you know, we are going to configure that EC2 instance as a self-hosted runner and then we will pick up a Java project configured in GitHub, and then we will just implement a basic CSCD workflow. Great. And then what are the other advantages of self-hosted runners? So pretty much what we just talked about, right? If you want to have full control over your environment and tooling, and then if you want to have your own custom configuration, right? And then uh, let's say that, you know, you don't want to worry so much about, uh, you know, any firewall issues or anything like that. If you want to really have uh, secure access you don't want to worry about any kind of a firewall issues or anything like that, then you can go for self-hosted runners, isn't it? So let's get started. Let's look at the prerequisite. Yes, we need to have a project configured in GitHub. So if you see here, this is a sample Java project. So we have configured in GitHub and we are going to uh, create a CACD workflow and we are going to use a self-hosted runner in order to you know, build this Java project using Maven. Uh, so that's exactly what we are going to do. It's a very simple workflow. I just wanted to demonstrate. Okay. And then we will also create a workflow ML file and we will check that in GitHub. And if we don't know how to create it, I have provided a small article here. If you wanted to uh, learn how to create a, you know, CACD workflow using GitHub actions, feel free to go through this particular article. So this is the uh, workflow ML file. Okay, and then we are going to uh, use our EC2 instance. So I have already created one EC2 instance, which is up and running in the AWS cloud. So we are going to configure uh, GitHub Actions Runner on this particular EC2 instance. Okay, and then of course, we also need to install Maven as well, because the runner is going to use Maven for building our Java project. So how do you create a self-hosted runner? So like I said, we are going to use this EC2 instance. So I'm already connected to my EC2 instance. I just created this, uh, you know, brand new EC2 instance. So this currently does not have anything installed. You can see here, right? So I don't have anything installed, Java or anything. I don't have anything installed, just, uh, sorry. So it doesn't have anything, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you how we can run builds on that particular EC2 instance, okay? so. We need to go to our repository. So this is my repository and then go to actions or you can also go to settings, go to settings, click on actions and then click on runners. 
So as you can see right now, we don't have any self-hosted runner, okay? So click on new self-hosted runner. And then what is our runner type? So we are going to use our EC2 instance, isn't it? So I'm going to select this one. And then look at the beauty, right? So GitHub is providing all kind of, uh, you know, documentation, uh, you know, on how we can configure runner on our EC2 instance, okay? So I have put together all the steps over here. So let's try to execute everything one by one, okay? So the first thing first, let's start with the sudo apt update because this is like, a, like I said, brand new EC2 instance. I don't have anything installed, but let's start with, the, you know, updating our EC2 instance. And like I said, guys, you know, you can configure uh, your self-hosted runner pretty much anywhere. But this particular video, we are going to just use AWS Cloud. All right, great. So the update is done. And then let's also go ahead and then install Maven as well, because like I said, uh, we are going to run, uh, you know, Java build, right? Okay, we are going to uh, build our Java application using Maven. So that's the reason why I'm installing Maven. But again, depending on your technology stack, you can install, you know, the, the, the required build tools. Great. So Maven got installed. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and then configure our runner. So let me go ahead and then create this uh, folder right now. And then as you can see here, we need to download the installables. So again, everything is provided over here. So if you see here, it comes as a tar file. All we have to do is, you know, just download them and then extract them. So let me copy this one. There you go. So we were able to download the tar file and then let's go ahead and then extract the tar file. So let me perform this particular command. Perfect. So this has been extracted and then let's go ahead and then configure the runner. But again, like I said, all the steps have been documented here. So they also created the token here as well. All you have to do is just copy this command and then go ahead and then run it. So what this will do is this will start configuring a runner on this EC2 instance. So right now it is actually asking for the name of the runner group. Okay, but uh, you know, I, I don't want to worry so much about it. I'm going to go ahead and then press enter. This will actually create a default runner group. And then if, if you want to provide uh, a name for the runner, you can actually do that. But let me do one thing. Let me go ahead and then say EC2 runner. Okay, enter. Okay, and then if you want to have any kind of uh, labeling, you can also go ahead and then provide that. Uh, but let me see here. I'm okay to, to provide the same name, EC2 runner, enter. So that's it, right? So now as you can see here, uh, runner has been successfully uh, configured. Now it is asking to provide a work folder. I'm okay with that name underscore work. So let me enter that. So perfect, right? So right now the runner is configured as you can see here. So all we have to do is now go ahead and then run it. So how do you run it? Just execute, I mean, again, if you want to see here, uh, you, you see here, right? We, since we have extracted here, all the files are here. So now let's go ahead and then run it. So this is the command what we are going to perform, run.sh. Perfect. Wow, look at here guys, what does it say? It says that connected to GitHub, now our runner is waiting waiting for the jobs, isn't it? So how do you confirm that? Let's go back to our GitHub and then let's go to runners, click on here. Wow, there you go guys, do you all see right now? So this was the label what we gave, right? So obviously right now we don't have anything, uh, we don't have any job running on this particular runner. So that's why it is actually in the idle state. Perfect, right? So we have successfully configured. So now let's go ahead and then create some basic, uh, you know, workflow AML file. And then let's go ahead and then run the build. Okay, so how do you do that? Like I said, uh, you know, I have a separate article. If you wanted to learn, if you wanted to learn how to create a workflow AML file, feel free to, you know, uh, do that. But I have already done that. So I'm going to go ahead and then simply copy and paste just to save time. So go into code. So we need to create that workflow file, isn't it? So click on add file, create new file. So we need to say 
dot github slash uh, it has to be workflows folder slash and then give a name of the ML. So I'm going to give CICD dot ML file. And then go ahead and then copy and paste the content. You see here, uh, the branch name is main, obviously, right? So the branch name is main. I think I, I can show you the branch name. Okay. And then, um, so this is the most important thing, right? Self-hosted. If you wanted to refer uh, GitHub hosted, then you would be providing something like Ubuntu latest or something like that, right? And then this particular uh, workflow is primarily having three major uh, tasks, right? I'm checking out the code, setting up Java, and then, you know, building with Maven. That's it, right? So let me go ahead and then commit changes here. So I'm going to say create CACD ML file, uh, just commit. And you can see here, right? That's the branch name. And that's exactly what I have over here. So now we were able to check in the code and you can see here the build is already running. So go to actions. There you go. The build already started, isn't it? And you can literally see here right now. There you go. Look at here, guys. And they also tell you what is the machine name and everything. So that is our machine name, isn't it? 172.31.33. Wow. So since we are running the Maven build for the very first time, so it is actually downloading all the dependencies. Uh, so when you run the build next time, uh, you know, it is not going to download those dependencies again, right? So that is also another, uh, you know, difference, uh, you know, using GitHub hosted versus self hosted, isn't it? Perfect. I think the job is done right now. And I look at here, right? So pretty much everything is, uh, you know, ran. And then of course you can also see that here as well, job completed and the result and whatnot. So so let's just go go back, right? There you go. And you can you can see right now, right? The build is done. Yeah. So yeah, so this is really pretty uh, straightforward, guys. So this is how guys, you know, this is how you can uh, configure self-hosted runner in GitHub Actions. Thank you for watching.